Hey, good evening. It's a Wednesday, October 2nd. And welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. You know, with all this happening in the world right now, the news is just going crazy with data and information. It's election season. We're being told all kinds of things. We need to be able to be wise in how we consume news. In other words, don't let the news take you captive. With everything that you hear, you've got to be able to look a way to verify it and then doubt it. I'm serious. Whatever you hear, do whatever you can to verify and then even then doubt it. Be careful. Be cautious. Don't be taken captive. That's what Colossians is warning us against. There's two things that we've got to run every bit of news, what we call news. We've got to run through these two filters, and they're biblical filters. The first is, I've got to know the source, and the second is, I have to find the bias of the news presenter. We'll look at the source first. How reliable is the source of the news? Well, Proverbs 18, 17 helps us with this. The first to present his case sounds right and until his opponent comes and cross-examines him. Or, in my paraphrase of this, First person story sounds good to the second person shows up. We have got to verify. We've got to ask questions. But the proverb is telling us this. Don't listen just to one side. No matter how convincing it is, check out the opposing side. And then secondly, find a way to cross-examine. Even if you can't do it in person, there's ways that we could check, we could cross-reference, we can do a lot of work on our own. Just don't accept somebody's opinion at face value from that. You want to find out what are the sources of the person making the claim. In other words, somebody that says, well, I saw this happen, or in 1987, this happened. Verify it. There's ways to do that. Find out who is the, what, what is the background material for what this person's saying. Is it just their opinion, or is it something else? If we spend the time, we'll be able to do that. Is the information being presented to you consistent? Is it verifiable? Words like a senior administration says, or sources say, or a reliable, no. That's not news, that's somebody feeding you something. Even if it's accurate, you've got, to, you've got to check it out. An interview is not a source of news. An interview is a most, almost all the time, a source of opinion. News and opinion are two different things. News is what's actually happening, and opinion is what I think about it. When you hear this presentation, and looking for sources, are both sides fairly represented, or is one side trashing the other side? And that's a flaw we've gotten into way, way too much. And then lastly, you've got to find the source of the news. In summary, you've got to find the source. Take the time to do the work. You can do it. You just can't trust the things that you're doing, but if you start putting pieces together, after a while, it'll make sense to you. And if you stay with it for a while, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly what's reliable and what's not. So that's the source. The second thing that is really important, the second filter, biblical filter, what is the bias of the person presenting the news? Everyone has a bias. I have a bias. Lord willing, it's a biblical bias, but everyone, no one, no one is completely neutral. We've all been influenced by something. Ephesians tells us this, that we are, before we came to Christ, we're caught up in a world system run by the enemy. We've got to shed ourselves of that kind of thinking, run from it. So Colossians 2.8, which we've looked at before, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic spiritual principles of this world, rather than on Christ. Well, you might think, well, what does Christ have to do with the 6 o'clock news? The worldview is there. The presentation is there. 
The ethics are there. Here's some things you can do to sort out things that are based on human tradition, hollow philosophy, or deceptive philosophy. Find the bias. First one, follow the money. Who's paying for this presentation? Who's paying the presenter? Who's paying for the production of it? Do they have a vested interest in controlling something? That's important to find out what that connection is. Secondly, you want to find, is there a political agenda going on? In other words, does the data be consistent with a particular party's platform or a particular candidate's platform or a movement's platform? You'll make that connection. You will look for an ideological agenda. In other words, find out the worldview of those. Things like when you hear there are more than two genders, that represents a bias. When you hear that weather is random, that represents a bias. When you hear that people are not accountable to God, that is a bias. What is the standard? They'll use the terms good and evil, good and bad all the time. Find out what they mean by good and bad. To some folks, good is making abortions available. That's a bias. You want to be able to understand that. Just because somebody says it's good may not mean your definition of good. If it's going to be biblical, are these things consistent with a biblical worldview? In other words, you don't necessarily have to be a Christian to say that I believe in marriage. That's consistent with the biblical worldview. You want to look for that, or as opposed not to that. Again, are we having respectful, non-condescending speech? That's an indication that something other than the data is there. That's a quick evaluation. I could spend hours on this. But if you have questions about this, you want me to pursue it more, please. I'd, I'd be happy to do that. If you have the interest, I'd be lo love to go for it. Just remember this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Ideally, you're getting news from people that have a fear of God. That's not very common. But you could check, verify, see what's happening. You want to verify and doubt. Don't be taken captive. One last little uh, recommendation here. This book, The Image, by Daniel J. Borston. It was written in the 60s, but it could have been written this morning. It's that relevant, it's that important. It tells us how to evaluate the news that's going on around us in clear, historic terms. This book is a valuable, valuable book. The Image by Daniel Borston. It's available on Amazon, other places. Just highly, highly recommend it. It's been so beneficial to me. Get back to me. Let's not be taken captive by the news. God's given us ways where we can think in the right kind of way, which is consistent with the way he wants us to take think, so that we're not captive. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. You have a great night. Bye-bye.